Greetings, everybody. This is Leviathan here, and man, oh man, am I pumped to bring you today's video because our prediction rang true. In the PTR videos that we had for patch 2.6.1, we were saying, you know, it looks like we're getting to the end of the PTR here. When is it going to launch now? We know that season 11 ended on October 20th. We knew that season 12 is starting up on November 9th, which is a Thursday after BlizzCon. And so somewhere in between there, you have a couple of, of Tuesdays, and that's usually when they like to patch their games. And so we're thinking, well, when is this thing going to patch? It could be the 24th of October, it could be the 31st, it could be the 7th. And luckily, they gave us the earliest possibility that we could get, and this was the date that I personally was banking on. So I feel really good, because my prediction was right. And it's here, it's here guys, patch 2.6.1, the patch of balance is officially live right now in the Americas. So if you're on Europe or if you're on Asia, you're gonna have to wait, uh, I believe until tomorrow to get this in your region. But if you wanna check it out, you can always hop onto the Americas, just change the region of your game and hop on in and see all the new changes. What is worth noting is that everything that went to live is exactly as it was in the very last version of the PTR. So if you've been keeping up with my videos from all of the previous PTR patches, then you're technically up to date on what to expect. All of this stuff is exactly as it was left on the PTR right before it closed up uh, just a couple of days ago. So I'm not gonna go over every single change. As you guys know, there's just some general things for highlights here. They revised a ton of the class sets. Essentially every class set got touched up. They wanted to do a top-down look across all the class performance and greater rifts, and they made several changes to bring as many gameplay styles as close in line to each other as possible, with the focus on some of the most popular or requested builds. And you can see that very much from, you know, the return of Whirlwind, Multishot, uh, Hoda, um, uh, I was gonna say Multishot again, Multishot, uh, Condemned Crusader, like all of uh, the Blessed Shield, a lot of those classic Holy Shotgun builds that everybody loves are now boosted back up into great success inside of high level greater rifts so you're going to be seeing a lot of parity at the top of the leaderboards where some builds will maybe be just one or two greater rifts ahead of the others there will always be that one that ekes out the advantage over the rest but you'll actually be able to do pretty much whatever you want especially if you're not pushing for rank one and you'll just be satisfied with playing whatever playstyle you want and still performing quite well another thing here is skill changes there are a few skills that had uh their either overall power just buffed up to be better and then a few that were adjusted or tweaked to improve their playability and performance. Because as you know, things like Fire Bats or the Necrosis effect on the Helltooth set, um, the Blessed Hammers for the Crusaders just caused a lot of lag in multiplayer games. And so they've been doing a lot of efforts to try and get that down. So hopefully when you get into those group settings, you won't be asked to leave if you're bringing those skills or those setups. And instead the uh, group will perform quite admirably, even with your area damage lag fest that used to be. Uh, I think I've heard reports that there is still some lag here and there, so it's not 100% fixed, but it, it must be better than it used to be at the very least. And then last but not least for the highlight in this patch, item revisions, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of legendary items were tweaked and had their legendary powers uh, modified to either add multipliers on there to make the skills that they support better or to make them just function better, to make them function with less uh, variability. So for instance, think of like your Dead Man's Legacy. Now they got rid of that 50 to 60% for the secondary, you know, the doubling of your multi-shot to take effect. It's just always at 60% of the mob's health. That's when it kicks in. But then they added a multiplier to that, which has a little bit of a range to it. So, you know, you're kind of getting rid of one thing to add a little bit more variability, but even those ranges for those are relatively small. So it's, it's really exciting stuff. I'm so, so happy. Um, I guess I'll give you a quick overview of sort of where the classes are. Uh, the Barbarians, it looks like Hoda uh, with, yeah, Hoda Hammer the Ancients IK set is looking pretty strong. Charge Barb as well, like straight up Raycor and maybe a Raycor IK mix will still be in the mix. And then of course Whirlwind with Wrath of the Waste is looking really nice too. Haven't seen too much of Might of the Earth, people talking about that one. For Crusaders, we're looking at uh, Condemn, a Con Condemn being potentially the top setup. But they also boosted Roland's Invokers and Seeker of the Light, like in the last, last PTR patch, in particular for Seeker. So those could also argue for the top. I think uh, Blessed Shield is certainly going to be up there as well, because it started to get some of its power back that it had early in the PTR. 
Uh, you might see Seeker honestly still be up there because it was the strongest previously to this new patch and it still got some love so it might uh, continue to vie for that top spot. So those are builds to look out for. Holy Shotgun is a build that a lot of people have been interested in. It's looking like it can be utilized as a uh, Greater Rift Guardian killer. So that might be something you throw into your groups, but it looks like the Necromancer will still have that position full time in terms of finding the best uh, boss killer. But you might be able to slot in a Crusader. Uh, for the monks, I think people are looking to target like Wave of Light, um, the Sun Ruko Wave of Light. I think you can run LTK out of that one as well too. Uliana's people are excited about. That playstyle is coming back stronger than ever. Haven't seen too much love for Inna's. And uh, Raymond got some boosts, but I think people are potentially just ignoring it because they've been playing Raymond for so long. So that's kind of your monk rundown. Necromancer Pestilence set seems to be the one that's getting the most attention and love. That's going to slot in over any of the old Corpse Lance setups, perhaps. So when people are running Trigools, maybe now they'll run Pestilence. Um, just a lot more Corpse Lances that you'll be able to get out. So you get some free ones with the two-piece. Uh, and and the, the buffs on it were very good, too. So uh, they started to nerf it a little bit at the end of PTR. They brought the numbers, they brought the buffs of it down a little bit. So we'll have to see exactly where it slots in. But like I was mentioning, Necromancer looks like it's securing a spot in the four player meta with its boss killing potential. Because eventually, after you switch over from Pestilence and Corpse Land stuff, you'll still go into your Anarius Bone, uh, the Bone Ringer skeleton setup where you'll eventually have that double stacking of the Bone Ringer and the Stricken to get those bosses killed quite quickly. And then there's even a... Uh, pet thorns build which with the right predicament to the right setup can kill greater rift guardians ridiculously quickly even in super duper high greater rifts but i think that one's a bit fishy you might be seeing that though there's some videos out there um and then this is just mentioning like some of the skill changes and such for all the classes which doctor i think the rundown here is um eric here fire bats is potentially looking pretty good maybe as the greater or greater rift trash killer um there could be a helltooth version of that as well jade got some love um so a lot of people are looking forward to getting back into the jade play style and then zuni mosses i think i saw big daddy den doing some testing on that and finding the results to be pretty good but i do believe we're probably seeing the death of lawn spirit barrage even though it got some buffs with the mask of jerem update i just think lawn in general is going to be behind in any version of lawn for whichever class uh, all those will be behind just because the sets themselves got buffed so astronomically with the six piece bonuses so don't really look for lawn builds and if you're a fan of those unfortunately you might have to wait for another patch before they look at lawn and try to buff it up again uh, so that's kind of your witch doctor rundown i'm not super certain exactly where they'll be going but it seems like they have some options and i think there's potential for some gargantuan builds in there too um, bringing the pet setups back for witch doctors and then last but not least, Wizard. Wizard's looking like uh, Del Sears Magnum Opus with Frozen Orbs going to be great. Uh, some channeling and meteor builds with, I believe, Talrasha's setup should be good. Bears is even a really good start. It looks like they did enough buffs on there where people will be able to cruise through early season since Veers is the free set for Wizards. I don't know that Veers will factor into the high level greater of pushing, but there's been some speculation that, you know, of the classes that will push the highest greater rift by the time all is said and done in season 12 necromancer is likely going to be at the top of that pile but then wizard might just be right there with it or right below it on one of those specs i just mentioned so look out for the wizard potentially ascending to the top but the other classes won't be that far behind either this patch really is about raising the floor lowering the gap between what's the highest highest and the lowest lowest so all the classes should be within that you know fighting range of a couple of greater rifts between each other it's a really really exciting time uh so that's pretty much it you can definitely go through the patch notes i'll put the link to them in the video description below if you want to see all the exact numbers that you have to look forward to of course you can just hop into the game and find these items something to note is that for the legendaries their changes are not retroactive so you'll have to find new versions of any of these items that changed the powers in the cube will be updated, so if you want to cube some of these until you find a new item, like cube your Blade of Prophecy and use a different item in your actual Equipped Crusader, you might be able to do that, but you'll have to drop a new Blade of Prophecy in order to get the maximum benefits of its updated legendary power and such. 
So definitely make sure you keep that in mind. Even if you're reforging, if you're using your bounty materials and reforging pieces that you previously had, they will not update to the new values. You have to drop a new version first, and then you can reforge that version in order to get kind of your best uh, chance at, you know, a new Primal Gerfalcon's foot or a new Primal Dead Man's Legacy, for instance. Uh, Demon Hunter, I also did forget to mention that there's the Nats uh, setup. There's some belief that Nats is essentially the new lawn for Demon Hunter, so that's where you'll do your Fan of Knives setup, and it has some potential to really give you ridiculous numbers in terms of having all your multipliers hitting uh, when you activate that Fan of Knives. The Lord Greenstone's fan got updated as well, so there is something to be said for that and Nats is the starting set i don't believe that it'll be a terrible starting set although i know a lot of demon hunters weren't super happy about it but you should be able to use it to get into farming into your next setup like your unhallowed essence and of course you'll be speed farming all over the place with multi-shot and uh yui grenades will also still be very good too do not sleep on that build it was obviously the best in the last patch and it will still continue to be very good in this patch i I just think that it's not getting a lot of love because people have been playing it for so long, as I mentioned with like the Raymond stuff as well too. And now you can see you got your sets on screen here, so these are showing you the updated uh, powers on the sets. The sets are retroactive, so do keep your set pieces and those will update. So if you have like a really nice ancient IK set already, then you're good to go. All your powers will be updated automatically when you download the patch, so don't worry too much about those. Uh, that is something that you could have been farming for previous to the patch launching if you were trying to prepare. Um, but obviously if you're playing Seasons, then technically none of that matters anyways, because everyone's going to start over from level 1 on November 9th. You may also be wondering which class I plan to play in the Season, because now I was saying all along that I was going to wait until the official patch notes came out to decide. And well, it looks like nothing too surprising happened here so I think it will be Crusader for me in season 12 that's what the stream voted on which you can see right above my head twitch.tv slash leviathan 111 feel free to check out the stream we're going to be testing some stuff here in the coming weeks before I go to BlizzCon next week and then when I get back we'll mainly just be preparing uh, for season 12 but we'll definitely get some build guides up here on the channel for Crusader builds maybe some Demon Hunter stuff if I have time because you know I still love my Demon Hunter and that will be it we'll we'll start up we'll start up on that thursday november 9th i won't go too crazy because i do have to work the next day and then that weekend we'll definitely try to get some deep sessions of play really get off the ground get some groups together all that good stuff you can see there are also some changes here to like adventure mode they made some um buffs up to the progression that we get from some of the more annoying mobs like the smoldering constructs and stuff like that some of the maps that were not so great with dead ends, like the Temple of the Firstborn and stuff, they um, changed that up. They reduced the fog effect in the Shrouded Moor tile set, which is great because that red fog thing was kind of insane. Shield pylons will no longer reflect damage back at attackers, and that was a, a cause of lag previously, so that's a great change to see. Shock towers, um, the amount of experience and progression that you get from them is improved because shock towers also sucked. And then your challenge rifts, this is important to know, will now come with death's breaths in them, just 10, which is a little low, but better than nothing, I suppose. And in general, the materials that you get from challenge rifts will be increased. So this will be something when the season starts, do not that week do your challenge rift. So the challenge rift rolls over on the Monday. Don't mess with it. Just wait until the season starts. Make a seasonal character, then go do the challenge rift. You'll be able to claim the challenge with cash after you beat the original person's time on your seasonal character and then you can use all those materials the gold the dbs everything to kind of jumpstart your character you know level your artisans all the way up be able to craft some hopefully level reduced level 70 items i'm going to be doing a video on like best practices at the start of a season and such so look forward to that but you know we'll have more tips of stuff like that to keep in mind when you're uh brand new in the season and last but not least, they fixed some things here with the monsters and whatnot, so that's good to know. This patch should also be the patch that brings in your uh, Necro, your Necro Mercromancer pet that you get for attaching the code for either your BlizzCon virtual ticket or your in-person uh, BlizzCon code. When you attach that to your account, you should be able to get the Mercromancer pet in-game. I'm noticing that it's not here in my game, so I don't know if that's just a bug or something, or maybe it's coming in a day or two. 
but uh, it should be. This should be the patch that will give you that pet. And then last but not least, people have been asking, hey, when will the Necromancer go on sale? And I've been saying, I'm not sure that they'll ever put the Necromancer on sale because they still want to make money off that thing. It's still a relatively new product. But as you can see on screen right now with the new Blizzard Battle.net app, um, they upgraded it. There is a shop in here and you can peruse the shop to see what you can get. And of course, if you don't own Diablo 3 or Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls yet, or you want to give it to a friend, it's on sale right now for $9.99. That's half off, 50%. But more importantly, if you've been holding out getting the Necromancer, that is on sale right now too. So originally $15, you know, $14.99, now down to $9.99. So that's actually pretty solid. If you've been wanting to get those stash tabs or, you know, the, the class itself, this is the best time to do so. And you can actually gift these things to your friends too. You can actually buy it, send it as a gift. So if you wanna you know, get your friends into the game, if you want them to join you, then maybe this is your opportunity to say, hey, I'm gonna spend the 10 bucks and send this to you know, Leviathan, Battle Tag, blah, blah, blah. And now, hey, you have a free Necromancer, come play with me in season 12. So pretty cool things going down. I hope you guys enjoyed that quick run through uh, like I mentioned, I'll put uh, you know information in the video description, so look out for that. Uh, more videos coming with stuff from the Crusader, with builds in 2.6.1, stuff to use in Season 12. Maybe some Demon Hunter, like I said, if I have time. I'm super busy getting prepared for BlizzCon. Um, stuff's on sale. It's all good, man. All good news right now. So look forward to hopping into the game. I can't wait to get in there. Going to be streaming tonight and, of course, for the next several days, trying to get more stuff done. So... Feel free to come and hang out, twitch.tv slash leviathan111. Hop into the comments, let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next video. Peace!